Welcome ESA Explores listeners. I'm your host for today, Laura Zermühlen, and in this series, we're meeting the members of ESA's Astronaut Reserve. During the first phase of their Astronaut Reserve training here at the European Astronaut Center in Cologne in Germany, they are mastering key skills in spacecraft systems, robotics, scuba diving, and survival training. Today, we're excited to introduce Alex Swoboda from Czechia. He combines his experience as a skilled pilot with a PhD in aircraft and rocket technology, all while inspiring others with his dedication to exploration and STEM education. Join us as we explore his journey through ESA's Astronaut Reserve Training Program. Welcome to the ESA Explores podcast. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing great. We just uh, finished about six hours of uh, PR in the morning with our, wow. our Czech media. So yeah, I'm looking forward to more PR today. As a starter, could you tell me in one word the first feeling that you had upon the selection to the ESA Astronaut Class of 2022? The first feeling, well, I was really happy because... Uh, yeah, it was a long process. It was about a year and a half, uh, six stages. So I was really happy to get uh, invited for the announcement. And your start in Cologne, because now you're at the ESA Astronaut Center here in Cologne. How has it been settling in? Well, we started with the annual medical. Mm -hmm. at, uh, basically, for me, it was on the first day of the training in here. And uh, yeah, then we had, uh, we've already had like five weeks of training mm -hmm. like that. So two more to come. And then the next, the next year, we're for the, the second part. And so far, what was your favorite part of the training? Uh, favorite, favorite part, I, I would say uh, the diving in the pool and uh, the lectures we had on uh, the, the history of human space flight. That's, right. Uh, obviously, what, to, what we, especially as, as, as a pilot, what, to, uh, what I have some sort of insight into yeah. and what, what I know, know quite well, I would say, especially also with my uh, PhD in, in aircraft rocket technology. Mm. But it's, it's, it's an interesting topic and uh, it's always... Uh, fun to talk with uh, with experts about a space shuttle program apollo and this kind of yeah, thing so i can imagine yeah. and would you say that there are any skills that helped you here during the training from your background as a pilot yeah definitely i'm re really grateful for my air force training and for my fighter pilot training because mm -hmm. i think like a lot of the skill sets a lot of the character traits are transferable to the astronaut world the operational mindset they're working yeah. under pressure in a team environment high stakes high high, high stress it's really really very well transferable yeah. And what is the most valuable skill or mindset, you would say? Uh, that I brought in? Uh, yeah, I would say like a good sense of judgment, mm. being able to, to work in a really operational setting in, in time constrained environment, it's this kind of thing. So in, in, a, in, a, in a team, being a leader, being, being a follower. Yeah. Is there anything new that you learned here, you would say? In terms of these things, like human performance, human factors, not not too much of new things, but it's nice to we we have a mixed group in here. We are three pilots and two researchers, yeah. so it's a really neat, really nice to learn from each other because yeah. there are areas where we as pilots are quite you know, uh, which with which we are quite 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 familiar. But for example, biology and the, the scientific areas is something not not necessarily new, but it's not something that we do on on a daily basis. So yeah. so it's a it's it's, it's good to like yeah, go outside of our comfort zone and learn something new and learn from each other as well. So the team dynamic is very well, I yeah, imagine. Yeah, I think like, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you learn from each other. Is there anything, what was your favorite part in the team maybe or that you learned together? A favorite part? Well, uh, I think uh, the the biology labs were quite fun. Mm -hmm. we, we did some, some stuff that we as pilots uh, we don't normally do. Uh, yeah, the diving was was uh, was awesome. Uh, I'm a I'm a recreational diver, so I have okay. a few Ooh, few dives on the recreational yeah. side. So uh, yeah, I did a little bit of diving in in, in Croatia, Spain, and in the Czech Republic as well. So yeah, it was really nice to to do a few more dives here in the NBF in the pool. Was there one surprising aspect of the training where you didn't expect that you would do that? Well, surprising, not not surprising for me, but maybe for the public, uh, it, it might be a bit surprising that a large portion of, of the this initial stage of the training is dedicated to a lot of media, PR, calm skills. So yeah. more, a lot, lot of the, the, the soft skills and the the more practical hands-on and uh, uh, trying to avoid the, the real stuff, but uh, the, the more like... Uh, astronaut kind of yeah. space space related directly related to space flight is uh, coming now and will be coming in the, the the next stage of the training yeah 
Do you enjoy it though, or do you think it's very valuable to have this part as well, the public outreach and educational outreach as well? Yeah, I think it is very important for, for the, the the space community and for the, the space program and for human spaceflight especially to bring all the interesting uh, stuff that's uh, that's a, a part of the the space mission preparation, the space flight itself, and the space uh, astronaut training to bring it to yeah. to public, to kids especially, to motivate them to to have them more engaged and more more may, maybe attracted to stem fields because what do we feel in the czech republic like our, our industry makes up uh, one third of, of our gdp of our economy but mm. uh, our our graduates at universities we have uh, almost like just under one quarter of our university graduates are in, in the stem field so that there's like a like a gap so yep. so we we definitely feel the need to to attract more people to the technical and engineering and scientific field so so bring all the interesting bits to to the people is is, is really very important yeah. in, in the space business like we do right here so yeah, exactly. <laughs> perfect <laughs> so a few rapid fire questions for you what's the most memorable place that you've traveled to uh, florida why Yeah, multiple reasons. Uh, first, I got married in there. Second, I visited the Kennedy Space Center. Yeah, got to see a launch. I, I think it, it was actually it was the Cygnus uh, on the Atlas uh, rocket flying mm. to cargo supply, ISS obviously. And I think it was Thomas Pesquet at the moment on, on ISS. Yeah. So it was probably bring some clean underwear, fresh oranges from for for, for Thomas. <laughs> so it was really really nice to see the launch. So. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? Some crocodiles as well. Ah, uh, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of them. Great. Do you have a favorite space mission? Yeah, it would be probably Apollo 13. Mm -hmm. Not just because of the movie, which I like also, but, but uh, I think there's a lot, a lot to be learned from from that particular mission. Yeah. What's the best advice that you have received in your career? The best advice, I think, that would have been one I've received just before joining the Air Force because. Back then, I joined the Air Force because I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Mm. And back then, there was like a lot of a uh, lot of obstacles or a lot of steps to be taken before you uh, become a fighter pilot. Basically, so you you needed to undergo a medical, you could pass the medical, uh, get enrolled at the university, the academy. Basically, go through uh, the undergraduate study, mm. go through the flight training, uh, be like a top performer in the class, both in the the in the at the school and also in the flight training. So. I met a guy who actually happened to be a former fighter pilot and also a former chief of the Air Force. So, mm. so we so we had a chat for a while. And he said, "Hey, just uh, take it a step at a, at a, um, at a time. Yeah. Just like, like a step by step approach, and you can you can achieve anything." So that's, that's what I did. So I passed the medical, got uh, got uh, accepted to the school. Was uh, like one of at the top of the not not the number one, but like among the top you in, in the class both in the flight training and both at the academic field yeah. got selected for fighters and i uh, got selected for supersonic fighters uh, finally and i applied the same approach when uh, when i uh, applied for the astronaut position so it was also like a step-by-step -step approach it was mm. uh, six different stages and it ended, ended up well finally so yeah, yeah. <laughs> i guess that's super good advice for all all yeah. the things that you do in life so yeah great very nice uh, note to end with uh, anything else that you wish for the future For the future, well, I think uh, we're on a good trajectory here, uh, both at, uh, at EAC and, and uh, in, in ESA, and also in the Czech Republic, with our, our effort to to uh, secure flight opportunities. So the one thing I wish is to have a have a Czech astronaut uh, in uh, in orbit soon. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that would be that. Great. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. My pleasure. It's been fantastic to hear about all these exciting steps our members of the Astronaut Reserve are taking. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and share it with anyone curious about space. Be sure to follow us and our Astronaut Reserve members on social media and visit isa.int for all the latest on our missions, training and behind the scenes updates. Until next time, stay tuned and keep exploring with ESA Explores.